In this video, we will learn how to name a means using the IUPAC system. So let's go ahead looking at the rules for naming a means. When we are naming a means, it will be very analogous to how we went about naming alcohols in that we will find the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms to determine the parent name. And the parent name for an amine will be formed by taking the E off of the alkane name that would specify the longest carbon chain and changing that term to a mean where you'll place a number in front to indicate the position of the amine group along that chain. And since the nitrogen atom could be part of a primary, secondary, or tertiary amine group, it's possible that the nitrogen atom may have additional alkyl groups bonded to it, in which case we would name those alkyl groups as groups with an N prior to them. And take a look. When we are naming amines, the process is very similar to how we went about naming alcohols with the added caveat that when we are looking at an amine, it's possible that the nitrogen atom doesn't just have one carbon directly connected to it, but instead it could have up to three carbon atoms directly connected to it. For example, in the case of this tertiary amine molecule that I am drawing here. So I'm just going to draw out an example amine molecule to get us started in looking at how we go about naming these amines. So to name the amine molecule, the first thing that we are going to do is find the longest carbon chain. And that longest carbon chain has to contain the nitrogen atom. So longest carbon chain in this molecule is going to be right here. And it has that direct connection to the nitrogen atom. This is going to be used to form the parent name of the molecule. And so therefore, the parent name of this molecule will be based on propane, a three carbon chain. But rather than it being just propane as the parent name, instead it's going to be propanamine because we need to designate that there is that amine functional group. So the parent name of this would be propan amine. And keep in mind that I have left the E off of the word propane. And that's the correct way of going about doing this is the parent name will follow the form alkan with no E amine, where our alkan part of the name specifies how many carbons there are in that longest carbon chain that is directly connected to the nitrogen atom. So then from there, what we will do, after you have found the longest carbon chain that contains that nitrogen atom, is then we will specify the location of the amine group in that chain. So in the case of our propanamine molecule here, our longest carbon chain, beginning at the end closest to the amine branch, is three carbons. The amine group nitrogen is at carbon one, so we call it one propanamine as the name for this molecule. Synonymously, you may also see this written as one, rather, you may see this written as propan one amine. By putting that one closer to the amine name, that is thought in some cases to make it easier to recognize that there is an amine group and that it is definitely at position number one rather than somewhere else. So either of these two will work as acceptable IUPAC parent names for this particular molecule. So that takes care of everything that we've highlighted in green. And then going from there on to the third thing that you need to keep in mind that is unique to naming amines is that we have two additional alkyl groups in this particular amine here and here, these two ethyl groups. And so other groups outside of that parent chain that are bonded to the nitrogen are referred to as N groups, meaning that we put an N at the beginning of the alkyl name. So we'll call the groups that are directly bonded to the nitrogen N alkyl branches. So name and locate those. So N alkyl branches are named and located. And when we say they're located, that means um, we're just specifying 
that they are located on the nitrogen. So you don't have to specify a number for that. The location is indicated by the fact that you see the term in immediately before the alkyl name. So to show this as an example of what we're doing here, we have two ethyl branches that are directly bonded to the nitrogen. So ethyl here, ethyl here. And so we would refer to that as an N comma N diethyl group. So here for amines, we're using the N to designate the location of that alkyl group. It specifies that the alkyl group is directly bonded to the nitrogen by saying it's an N group. And by saying N, N diethyl, that means that both of the ethyl groups are directly bonded to that same nitrogen molecule. And so piecing this together to come up with the full name for this molecule, what we come up with in total is N, N diethyl, one propanamine. Or as an alternative, you could have also said NN diethyl propan one amine, since one propanamine and propan one amine are synonyms of one another. So let's do another example. And in this example, we're going to blend in the possibility that you could have multiple functional groups occurring within the same molecule. So in this example, we illustrate the situation where we have a molecule that has not just an amine functional group, but also other functional group or groups as well, such as an aldehyde group and a ketone group in this particular example molecule. So how do we go about determining the IUPAC name for this molecule? Well, we need to think back to our hierarchy for how we determine the parent name of the molecule. So our hierarchy of determining the parent name went as follows, and this is a review of the list that we have seen before where carboxylic acids were at the top of the list. And if there's a carboxylic acid molecule, carboxylic acid group present in the molecule, that's going to determine the parent name. Then we had going down in order of importance for determining the parent chain, aldehyde, ketone, alcohol, amine, so the amine is relatively low on the list here. It's below alcohols. And then even further down the line here in the hierarchy were alkene groups and alkyne groups, alkyl groups, which were the same rank as alkoxy groups or ether groups, and halogen atoms. And so based on this chart in our hierarchy of parent names, going from least important at the bottom to most important at the top for determining the parent name of the functional groups that have present in our molecule, the highest ranked is the aldehyde group. And so therefore our aldehyde group at the right end of the molecule here is going to be used to determine our parent chain. So we anchor our parent chain here based on the aldehyde group find the longest carbon chain that contains that aldehyde group, and that would be coming right through here like this. We number the molecule based on that group that is highest in the hierarchy as well, starting with the aldehyde group, since the aldehyde group was highest in our list there. And so we have a total of six carbon atoms in this longest carbon chain. And we base the parent name on that aldehyde group, which we learned about in the last chapter. So six carbon aldehyde, the parent name is hexan, Al for aldehyde. And then we need to go about naming the branches that come off of that longest carbon chain. So in this case, we have an amine branch coming off. We also have this carbonyl branch, which is part of a ketone. And so going back to what we know from the previous chapter, when you have a ketone group that we are naming as a branch, we call that an oxo group. So this would be a five oxo group. And at position four, here's the, the new information is that if we have an amine branch, amine branches are referred to as amino groups. So an amino group is an amine branch that is coming off of the parent chain. So if the amine group doesn't form the parent name because it's not the highest up in the hierarchy here, instead it will be named as a branch and specifically it is an amino branch. And so at position four, we have four amino. So now plugging those in, 
to create the full name of this molecule, we have four amino, putting these in alphabetical order, four amino, five oxo hexanal as the complete name for this. In the case of this particular molecule, we do have one stereocenter right here at position four, that if we had wedges or dashes present here at position four, we could assign that as RS, but since all we have shown in this particular example are lines, it is not possible to assign that as R or S. So we'll just have to leave this as 4-amino, 5-oxo, hexanal for now. Now, to mix this up just a little bit, let's do an example where rather than having a primary amine group as the branch coming off, let's instead take this and turn it into, let's say, a secondary amine coming off of the molecule. So I'm going to go ahead to prepare for that. I'm going to erase the name that we come up, came up with for this molecule. And I'm going to make the modification here of our NH2 group to convert it into instead an ethyl group and we'll leave a hydrogen there. So now we have rather than a primary amine, we have instead a secondary amine because we have two direct bonds between the nitrogen and other carbon atoms. So now how do we go about naming this molecule now that we have not just an NH2 group up there, which would just be an amino group, but instead the molecule has an ethyl group as well. So how do we go about specifying that? In this case, what we will do is we will name this group as a complex branch, our amine group here, as a branch within a branch is the way that we have kind of referred to this as before. So let me illustrate what I mean here. So our parent name still hexanal. Our six carbon chain there hasn't changed. We still have that aldehyde group at position one. We still have five oxo because that hasn't changed. But now that we have attached that ethyl group onto the nitrogen, we refer to this as at position four, we have this entire group that I've highlighted in pink, which isn't just an amino group anymore, but instead it is an ethyl amino group. And by putting all of that ethyl amino into parentheses, that indicates to the reader that all of this, the full ethyl amino group, is at position four. And it's not as if the ethyl group is at some other position of the chain here. By putting that all into parentheses, that indicates that all of that is present at position four. And by saying ethyl amino, that indicates the ethyl group is directly bonded to the nitrogen of our amine group. So now we plug that in as the first part of our name here. So we have now four parentheses ethyl amino, reminding us that that whole group is all at position four of the chain, and then five oxo hexanal as the complete name of this particular molecule. So let's take a look at this example problem just to make sure we have the hang of naming amines. As always, I recommend you hit pause, try this problem on your own, and then hit play to see if you've got the hang of it. In this problem, we take things up another notch from our previous examples by looking at a situation where we have the nitrogen atom of the amine group is not a primary or secondary amine, but now it's a tertiary amine. So we have multiple alkyl groups bonded to that nitrogen to contend with in this molecule that has multiple functional groups. Just like in our last example, we need to first evaluate what the longest carbon chain is that contains our highest group within that naming parent hierarchy. So we have within this molecule, we have alkyl groups, we have a ketone group, and we have an amine group. Highest ranked group there is the carbonyl group of our ketone. And so therefore that's what we're going to base our determination of the parent chain on. So we have our carbonyl group right there of our ketone, finding the longest carbon chain that goes with that ketone group. We can come right through here like so. Don't feel obligated to go out into this ring. This ring is not the largest component of the molecule and it doesn't contain part, it doesn't contain the carbonyl group of the ketone, so you don't want to try to include that in your parent name. That is going to be a branch. So now coming up with the parent name for this molecule, we find our longest carbon chain, as we've done, and we start numbering that from the end closer to the ketone group. So the ketone group is closer to this right-hand end of the molecule. 
And so therefore, the right end right here is where you start numbering one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is a ketone. And so therefore, the parent name here is three, because the ketone group is at carbon number three, hexanone. As is often the case with these parent names, we could also name this hexan three own. That is your decision there, and both are equally accurate for IUPAC nomenclature. Now we take a look at the branches coming off of the parent chain that we highlighted in pink. We have this branch coming off, which is a three-membered ring. A three-membered ring would be referred to as a cyclo. Propane has three carbons, so cyclopropyl is going to be a ring with three carbons that is a branch. That YL, as always, indicates that it's a branch and not the parent chain. And this is all at position four of the chain. So I'm going to plug in four dash cyclopropyl there. Now, taking a look at our new material here, our new theme is naming amines. And so we have our amine group right here at position six. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in that at position six, we have an amine group. And if this were just an NH2 group, we would just call it a six amino group, but it's not just an NH2 because we've got these alkyl groups here to deal with as well. And so the way that we go about naming that is we do six, and then we put into parentheses the full name of all of this, referring to the names of the two alkyl branches that are coming off of the nitrogen in alphabetical order. So we have a methyl group coming off of the nitrogen and an ethyl group. So we would call this an ethyl methyl, putting those in alphabetical order, and then amino comes last. And you could think of the amino part of that group coming last because the amino is what's directly connected to the rest of the molecule. And also the amine group is the highest ranking of these groups so that forms the last part of this branch name. So ethyl methyl amino is going to be the complete name of this. So if you have the take home here is if you have a nitrogen amine that is a tertiary amine, then you will need to provide within these brackets the name of both of the alkyl groups that are directly bonded to the nitrogen here listed in alphabetical order before you write the word amino. So with this all in place, we can now plug in these branch names for our amino group and our cyclopropyl group into the front of our name here. Now, in alphabetizing these, we haven't run into the term cyclo too frequently, so you might be tempted to look at cyclo and think that maybe it's a term like di, tri, tetra, etc. that doesn't get included in alphabetizing. But the fact of the matter is the term cyclo is included in the IUPAC alphabetization based on the current IUPAC rules. And so as a result, when we are alphabetizing this, we're going to alphabetize based on the E in ethyl and the C in cyclopropyl. And that puts cyclopropyl first in the alphabet, and so therefore we'll put that first in our name for cyclopropyl. And hopefully I've left myself enough room here to write in this giant amino group name. 6-ethyl-methyl-amino runs right in there to 3-hexanone, keeping in mind these parentheses are essential because the parentheses tell us that everything inside the parentheses are all found at position number six of our chain. So here at position six, that's where we have our ethyl methyl amino group. And the fact that there's the amino name there indicates that the nitrogen is what's directly connected to the rest of the chain there at position number six. So with these examples and the rules that we went over, you should now be comfortable in assigning the IUPAC names for similar amine molecules and molecules that have not just an amine group, but also other functional groups as well.